From last week Monday, leaders from countries around the Pacific met to discuss major issues affecting them in the region. As host to the 46th Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Summit, Papua New Guinea, as the new chair of the forum, was expected to make announcements on several sensitive issues. Papua New Guinea Minister for Foreign Affairs, Riming Pato, spoke to MTV about the expectations going into the forum, the challenges PNG as host country faced in staging it, and the outcomes of dialogue between the member countries. I think the forum, uh, as expected, went very well. It's been a very successful event for our government and our people. We know that the Pacific Islands Forum is a uh, important organization for the region. It is the preeminent institution for all of the Pacific Island countries. And we wanted to ensure that uh, at a critical uh, time like this, uh, we, uh, with our own growing influence uh, and our, the role that we are playing in the region, we want to make a success of it. And uh, I'm uh, uh, humbled by the fact that all our officials have worked hard here in Papua New Guinea, uh, Dame Mac Taylor and her staff at the Pacific Islands uh, Forum Secretariat have equally uh, worked hard to put this together. And uh, so I pay uh, tribute to uh, Dame Mac Taylor and our staff at the PIF uh, Secretariat in, uh, in Suva, Fiji, as well as our own uh, department, that's the Department of Foreign Affairs, as well as the National uh, Games uh, the National Events uh, Office, and there's also been other uh, stakeholders in this event, the Office of National uh, Planning and Monitoring, the Ministry of Fisheries, Ministry of Environment and Conservation, uh, Ministry of Tourism. So all the relevant stakeholders in Papua New Guinea were able to uh, make a contribution to ensure the success of what was a very important event uh, in our country. The reason why we want this event to succeed is also because uh, we will be uh, hosting a number of other important events uh, in this country. Of course, we have the uh, uh, independence uh, celebrations uh, uh, coming on the 16th of September. Uh, that will be followed by, in 2016, uh, sometime in May or June, uh, there will be a meeting of the African, Caribbean and Pacific leaders uh, meeting here in Papua New Guinea. Of course, there is the expectation that we will be able to put together a, a good program of events. And uh, then in 2018, uh, we will have the APEC. Uh, the APEC, of course, represents 60% uh, of the world's economies. And they will, the leaders from the United States of America to China, to Japan, to Indonesia, to the Philippines, and of course, our friends in uh, Australia and New Zealand. So that's a huge uh, uh, undertaking. So all these events, we are trialing it to run the big one uh, come 2018. Okay. Well, clearly we have learned a lot from this event and uh, there has been uh, uh, some uh, challenges. No event is uh, run with perfection. Uh, each event brings with it uh, new uh, uh, challenges, some of which uh, uh, are unbeknown to those who prepare those events. And uh, as a consequence, we've had some challenges, but they have been addressed. So moving forward, we want to make sure that we perfect a program to ensure that every event that we host uh, uh, as, a, as a country, um, as a leader in this region, and as the only country uh, which is the bridge between the Pacific and Asia, and uh, is the country with the largest population, the largest land size, and uh, you know the biggest economy in all of the Pacific Island st states, we have to make sure that Whatever we do, we try to do the very best for the Pacific. So they can not only uh, uh, learn from us, but they can also partner with us and be, 
be uh, uh, be proud of what we do, as uh, as uh, many of the countries of the Pacific have, ex have have expressed to me in recent times that they are very proud of the way uh, Papua New Guinea uh, conducts itself in putting together events like that, particularly the South Pacific Games, which uh, took place in July of this year, and. Um, and as we progress to uh, partner with all of the uh, uh, Pacific Island states under this new framework of uh, Pacific regionalism, the need to work together as a region, uh, somebody must take the lead. And I think we are, we are trying our best to do just that. At this forum, issues that made it onto the member leaders' agenda were collated following a process based on the framework for Pacific regionalism. It was a first for the forum. Uh, well, you see, it's not a new process. Under the, the, con under the documents that uh, constitute the Pacific Islands Forum as an institution, there are certain decisions that the leaders must, uh, must uh, take in the interest of the region. And uh, since the establishment of the PRF, they realized that uh, they have to uh, better themselves. They need to prune uh, some aspects of the, uh, of the framework and the thinking around uh, what the Pacific Islands Forum agenda entails. And when you look at institutions around the world and the need for reform and the, and, and, and the structures by which better outcomes can be achieved, in, t in asking the question, what is the relevant architecture by which you drive the best outcomes for your country or your region, um, the leaders realized that they must have a regional plan, a regional framework for sustainable development, a regional uh, framework to uh, protect our uh, major resource, the oceans and the fisheries. They realized that we must have a regional framework to address such important issues as climate change. That's why the, the idea, the concept of a Pacific framework, Pacific uh, regionalism has come about. The Pacific plan was thought, thought of some years ago, I think back in 1980 by Sir Julius Chen and it then materialized into a Pacific plan review, which was chaired by Sir McCary Morota. And the final roadmap has been agreed here. Of course, all of them are Papua New Guinean citizens. Uh, they, uh, they thought of the idea, we've done the framework and the roadmap road I had has eventually been here in Pap uh, approved here in uh, Papua New Guinea at this uh, 46th uh, forum and we are therefore consequently as we should be very proud and very excited to implement this uh, process. With regard to ensuring the common good for all the member countries in the region, Papua New Guinea recognized the needs of other smaller island states and, where necessary, surrendered several things for the good of the region. Well, the West Papua, one of the organizations, or one of the groups that represent uh, some of the Melanesians living in uh, the Indonesian, uh, five Indonesian provinces of which comprise of Melanesians there, was given observer status at the MSG group, which is a sub-regional organization comprising of Fiji, uh, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, and uh, Papua New Guinea, and, and FLNKS in New Caledonia. So the, there, uh, that's the structure where most of these issues are discussed. Here, when the issue arose as to what should be done, uh, then clearly uh, uh, the leaders determined uh, that uh, there is no question, no question whatsoever that all of the 11 plus million Melanesians living in the five provinces of uh, Indonesia live within the jurisdictional competence or within the sovereign state of Indonesia. So the sovereignty of Indonesia 
over the people, Melanesian peoples living in that country is never in doubt and cannot be questioned. Insofar as the issues of human rights are concerned, as the our Prime Minister and I have said on a number of occasions, there must be uh, proper evidence on which uh, some inquiry could be had by relevant parties. And the leaders in this case uh, put a recommendation that uh, there could be a fact-finding mission to deal with that issue in Indonesia, but of course that is subject to the consent of the Indonesian government. So the Republic of Indonesia has to agree and has to be consulted uh, in relation to this particular matter as to whether or not such a uh, inquiry will take place and if so, when, uh, having regard to the fact that there was a uh, uh, ministerial mission also to the Republic of Indonesia uh, on this question uh, some years back, where that team uh, uh, made uh, uh, findings and subsequently some recommendations which were the subject of uh, past uh, uh, leaders, particularly the MSG group. So um, put it this way, uh, I'm not, uh, the, well the leaders have made the correct decision because they've come to the conclusion that uh, Melanesians living in Indonesia are uh, uh, in relation to any issues that they might rise, uh, uh, raise, they're matters for the government of the Republic of Indonesia. Insofar as human rights are concerned, we will work with and through Indonesia to uh, resolve them if there's any evidence of it. Of the five main agenda items for the leaders' consideration this year, the West Papua issue was the most sensitive. Minister Pato says the leaders have made the decision that Indonesia's sovereignty over its Papuan province is undisputable. It's not we are chair, but it's not entirely a matter for us. Uh, we have a uh, structure, we have the Pacific Islands Forum, uh, secretariat which will uh, work through those issues because some of these uh, matters that the leaders have discussed which is a subject of the communique are matters which will transform into further uh, actions at the United Nations General Assembly which uh, is uh, probably 10 days away uh, from now and then of course uh, we have uh, COP21 in Paris in November. So there's a whole program of events and uh, events and um, institutions in which some of these issues will be discussed. So just because we've uh, made some decisions here doesn't mean that it will stop here and at the uh, Secretariat. It's ongoing work and of course PNG will do its part to lend the support that the Secretariat needs so that we as a regional organization uh, will have a voice that can be heard in all the relevant institutions and globally. PNG is now chair of the PIF, and it clearly understands what this role entails. Its voice on behalf of the region must not only be heard within member countries' jurisdictions, but also the world over. Again, as I say, um, these are matters that uh, that what, what is, of course, the common good on the on issues of climate change, on sustainable fisheries uh, uh, development. Uh, for example, Papua New Guinea uh, agreed to forego some of its uh, uh, interest in relation to uh, what kind of revenue or royalty payment is, it, it should uh, obtain from the negotiation with the American Tuna Boat Association uh, given the fact that uh, there were smaller uh, islands of the Pacific who were more vulnerable than us. So it's a give and take. So if somebody's better placed to raise an issue and somebody has better resources, or you know, someone sh some state uh, should be, a, uh, would, uh, uh, would be uh, a posi in a position or could, could best adopt a particular situation, uh, proposition for the best interests of all of the states and the issues concerning that will be canvassed and then uh, individually it will be a decision for that state to take in the best interests of the region because the end outcome is an outcome 
that we all want and overall they will stand to benefit and uh, that's Papua New Guinea's position because of our own position uh, in the region. French Polynesia, New Caledonia and Tokelau attended the formal sessions as associate members while Timor-Leste attended as an observer in the 2015 Pacific Islands Forum. The leaders welcomed the progress made in the implementation of the framework for Pacific regionalism, including the establishment of the Specialist Subcommittee on Regionalism. Chaired by Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, the 46 Pacific Islands Forum reached several understandings on issues affecting the Pacific, including climate change and West Papua. The leaders have endorsed the Pacific Island Forum leaders' declaration on climate change action, a declaration aimed at amplifying the Pacific voice to influence thought around the world on climate change effects. Pacific Island leaders have, of course, made some declarations on the climate change uh, action plan. And one of the major ones been that uh, we appreciate that there is current and projected impacts of climate change because uh, the region's vulnerability, given the limited capacities that we have. What's important is the appreciation by Australia and New Zealand of the, the position, the very vulnerable position of uh, those of us on the front line of climate change. And uh, of course, that is a reality we have to face, and a reality that we have to face into the future. Australia and New Zealand have already announced very ambitious targets for emissions reduction to take to the Paris Conference. New Zealand's got a 30% target, Australia's got a 26 to 28% target for emissions reductions, and that compares to 25% for Japan, 4% uh, for uh, Korea, and of course China is going to have a 150% increase in its emissions uh, between now and, and 2030. And on a per capita basis, Australia's target is actually the most ambitious target in the developed world, certainly of those countries that have so far announced a target. On fisheries, the leaders have agreed that a joint task force led by appropriate agencies should lead the development of the regional roadmap for sustainable Pacific fisheries and direct an increase achievable within the next five years. The forum leaders have recognized Indonesia's sovereignty over Papuan provinces, but have noted concerns about human rights, thus requesting the chair to convey the views of the forum to the Indonesian government and to consult on a possible fact-finding mission. On West Papua, we note and we respect the sovereignty of Indonesia over West Papua, and of course, we uh, also note some of the concerns uh, that uh, we have about human rights situation in the Papuan provinces. And that is why we are calling on all parties to protect and uphold the human rights of all residents in Papua. The leaders have also considered French Polynesia's application for full membership of the Pacific Islands Forum. A decision for full membership is pending a review of the criteria for admission of new members into the PIF. Regional Assistance Mission to Solomon Islands was also noted in the 2015 PIF communique. It is now confirmed that the Federated States of Micronesia will host next year's meeting while Samoa will host in 2017, Nauru in 2018 and Tuvalu in 2019. The spouses of the leaders of the Pacific Islands Forum had their own program last week. They visited the Caritas Technical Secondary School in the nation's capital. The delegation was led by host Linda Babao O'Neill. On arrival at the all-girls school, the women were presented with necklaces called bagi, originating from the Millen Bay province. They were treated to a range of entertainment by the students, including traditional dances from the Millen Bay province and song performances by PNG's renowned musician, Buruka Tao, and his daughters. The delegates were even shown a display of taekwondo skills and dances. 
The delegation was then taken on a tour of the school to see the different academic and technical skills being taught. They visited the school's library, the computer lab, sewing department, grooming section, and the cooking department where they were invited to complete a muffin project with creative icing designs. During the week, they also visited the nature park, the Bukbulong Pikinini Library, and they went on a boat cruise around Fairfax Harbour.